fo what is up, folks? We are back. It's Mess, and I'm here with Brett FX, as always. How you feeling, Brett? You ready for this match? I thought you were going to be just like football people, and I was like, yes, we're watching football. And <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Although my team got beat out of the playoffs, so it doesn't even matter. American uh, football, for those of you who might be over in EU, so you guys probably don't even care. Yeah. But, but yeah, <laughs> my, my, my Packers got beat out, so I really don't care anymore until the Super Bowl rolls around. So, yes, we are into, <laughs> what is this, round? This is still round two, right, Brent, since we're on Dawn Breaker? This is round number two. We're going to be playing all of the round two matches today. Round three and four will be happening on Monday. So that's going to be pretty Monday, cool Monday, not Sunday? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be Monday because of the Go4 series is going to be happening on Sunday. Oh, got you. Yeah. So, but uh, anyways, yeah, so we are going to be watching FAV versus Exertus EU. Now, uh, FAV is being one of the better Brazilian teams right now. They are uh, they're pretty good. They, we saw them last week uh, in Sivo, handling themselves very, very well. And then, of course, Exertus EU being the top team in UK right now. Um, they even got themselves a nice little shiny spot in the EMS, uh, I believe, as a, <laughs> when they qualified for it. So congratulations to them. Uh, very cool stuff there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it should be a pretty good match. I'm, I'm definitely hoping that's going to be a great match. What's going to be interesting, though, are, uh, are the pings. So, you know, a lot of these people are saying, ah, you know, it's a U.S. team versus uh, a EU team. There's going to be ping differences, or there's a U.S. team versus a, um, a uh, South American team. There's ping differences. Well, if we look at the pings right now, they're actually kind of the same because they are from EU and in a or uh, in SA, and it's a North American server. So that's not going to be playing uh, almost any kind of role, I would say, in this particular matchup right now, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's a good point. This is actually for these for where these teams are located. It's kind of a centralized server location. They're probably both similar distances from it, so they all have similar high pings. Although I'm guessing in general. The FAV guys will probably have slightly higher, albeit not much, and certainly, like Brett said, not nearly enough to make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but anyways, we are going to be uh, getting on our way here in just a few moments. We're just waiting for one more guy from FAV, I believe, uh, to jump in. Or no, for Exertus to jump in. Looks like we had one drop. Um, and that's going to be, uh, for the Exertus side, we are going to be having Phantom, Bambi, uh, Hadoukens, and uh, Mr. Sparkles, who I believe is Jack Frags. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is. And uh, who was their fifth that was coming in? I just saw them. Crazy Nettas. Crazy Nettas is going to be playing, which he actually has not played any comp since, I believe, Battlefield 3 he played. And, uh, coming out of retirement. Yeah, I think he played, the last time he played was in the, the um, what was it? The uh, oh crap, Invitational, I believe, back in June. Uh, so it's been quite some time since we've seen him come out and play in, in some comp, and uh, I'm I'm happy about it. That guy is yeah, a beast of a player, it. one of the, one of the better players that I've seen play, and uh, just a really cool guy all around. And then uh, of course FAV being very solid, we're going to be seeing Synergy Cole Cracker or Crackers, Crackers, Crackers uh, Metroid X General Abbey and uh, Alpha. So awesome stuff. I yeah, believe there. we watched FAV and SIBO recently, and Crack has had himself a pretty beast round. I think he went uh, went for maybe a upper twenties. I don't know if it was quite a thirty bomb, but it, he was very frag heavy for his team on a team that in the first round actually won the round, but got out fragged by probably twenty, maybe twenty five frags by the other team, but still won it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So proving that absolutely. teamwork can overcome frag power sometimes in this game type. Yep, it, it can, but that was on a completely different math than what we were playing tonight. Tonight we are playing Dawnbreaker, which, as we saw in that last round, uh, is going to depend heavily on setups. Where are they set up? Where are they able to uh, uh, to set up those, those pushes and uh, to break those holds? Because as we saw in that last match, A and B are brutal if you can be able to hold those two setups. If you stick up uh, at least one, maybe two guys over there on upper side and then one sitting over there on uh, on long A, you are going to be in a very good position to hold that off the entire match. Um, and uh, we'll see what both of these teams are going to be doing. I would imagine that Exertus is going to be playing uh, your standard, you know, your strats, unless someone like we saw from Slap last time. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to be very consistent. They've, uh, they've had to play against some of the best teams in the world uh, every single day when they scrim. So... Uh, they're going to be used to this kind of stuff, and it's really going to be all up to FAV to really make their mark right now. They have a chance to have a, a huge uh, upset right now. 
Yeah, certainly I think that would be an upset, but I don't think I'm going to go on a limb and say that they will. They could possibly surprise me, but I am expecting Exertus to win this match and move on. Now, speaking of moving on, let's uh, let's bring up the brackets to see where Exertus and Fuerzas Armadas Virtuales show up in this in the realm of things. It is a quite a big bracket, so we can only show pieces of it at a time to you guys, but we're going to bring it up for you right now. And as you can see, Exertus EU facing off against FAV. They will play the winner of Assault Elmop. And I believe that match is actually over, and Assault Team did win that because I think it was yes. cast on the other channel. So they, the winner of this match will move on to play Assault Team, another, I believe, South American team that is quite strong and I believe undefeated in SIBO right now in their group. Uh, yes, they are. But, uh, yeah, the winner of this one will be moving on to face them in round number three on Paracel Storm. And then uh, if you look a little bit below them, we did have Fnatic beating out Project Mayhem and uh, Prime Team Esports beating out Exploit Gamers. So it's now going to be round number three, Fnatic versus Prime Team on Paracel Storms. I'm going to be giving the edge to Fnatic on that one. Yeah. I don't um, think I, many people would disagree with you, Brett. And if they do, they're crazy. Know. Yeah, and uh, right now, actually, Triple A and Saucy Gamers are going to be happening over on the Gaming Grids 2 uh, channel. So if you want to go check that out at any point in time, uh, if you are an AA fan, which uh, I am an AA fan, I got to say, um, but uh, they are going to be playing over there on Gaming Grids 2. Want to check that out? Uh, but we should be getting underway here pretty soon. And the only other people that have moved on uh, within the brackets so far uh, that, that we know of, anyways, is going to be Exertus NA, who was able to take out. Um, uh, NT Electronics, and they will be facing the winner of Intez Gaming and Team Phoenix. And of course, we did see Slap move on earlier in a nice performance by them, winning over a Flot Gaming, who I think we expected a bit better performance from them. I, I gotta say, I was a little disappointed in them. I thought that was gonna be a closer game. Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta say, it was just not really their map. It wasn't their time um, to do anything. I mean, it, it was a little bit disappointing, but, you know, it's like I said before, sometimes the ma the teams are just not built for these maps. I mean, um, you know, you have a very uh, open flag hoppy type situation uh, with uh, Parasol Storm, Zavod, uh, that type of thing. And then you have very locked down um, lane dependent maps like Dawnbreaker, Lockers. Um, you know, these are the maps that you want to set up uh, lines basically and, and cut the map in half and just hold it. And not a whole lot of flag hopping going on. Not to say that there can't be, because obviously in, in Domination, you can flag hop to your heart's freaking content. <laughs> if you want to play it that way. Yeah. So yeah, we will be underway shortly. Round two on Dawnbreaker. Going to be Exertus EU against FAV. Hopefully a close one. Perhaps FAV could surprise us with their teamwork. And again, as Brett said, it's going to be interesting to see two high pingers facing off. Whereas normally it's one team is high ping and one team is usually you know pretty pretty standard decent pings, you know, thirties. Or at the very 60s. least, at the very least, we won't have to listen to a North American team going, "God, those BRs." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great point. No whining from either team in this one. I don't think. I don't think we'll see that. I hope not. <laughs> that would be a shame. Yeah, it would be. Um, so anyways, I think actually XTS is having some issues getting their players in. Nope, they do have all five of their players in. They actually have better pings right now than FAV. We're seeing 290 uh, pings going on. So this may be a New York server for them, which would be really, really good for them. But uh, we should be going live here in just a few moments. I'm actually going to text a couple of these guys on Battlelog because I do have them on my friends. Nice. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Nope, that wasn't. Never mind. That was an old text. I was about to say we are alive, but you know that's not obviously. <laughs> I should hope not, because the round's almost over. But anyways, guys, we do appreciate you coming out and watching. This is the Gaming Grids fifteen hundred dollar tournament. Uh, we do uh, welcome you to go check out the website www.gaminggrids.com. You can also uh, follow this channel. We'll be doing multiple events coming up. So uh, definitely tweet this out, support it, share it, all that kind of good stuff because we will be having more content coming your way. we also be doing rounds two and or rounds three and four on Monday as well as the semifinals and finals next Saturday. So stick around for it. That's going to be some really, really exciting matches coming up. Some of the best teams in the world well, as well as the best team 
in the world will be playing. So going to be some exciting matches going down there. And uh, also, uh, go check out uh, the open play system for Gaming Grid. It's going to be very, very cool stuff there. If you want to just basically play in the server just like you normally would for a small entry fee, you can actually be entered in to win some extremely good money. We have uh, Fnatic uh, Valutasia winning over $300. We had Andrew Pass winning about $200. Powell from Vivacity winning a couple hundred dollars. So, uh, yeah, all they did basically was play in a designated server for a uh, designated amount of time. And uh, because they had... Uh, the, the superior stats in that particular server, they were able to walk away for some cold hard cash. And who doesn't like that? You're already playing games, so you may as well make some money while doing it, or at least potentially make some money. Make it a little bit more intense for you when you're pubbing, especially for us competitive players, since we do like having that competitive edge to the gameplay. So, once again, we thanks you guys, thank you guys for tuning in with us. I am... I am Mess. I am controlling the stream because Brett's internet is kind of taking a poop on him, and he is Brett FX. We encourage you guys to also follow us on Twitter for our future casting events. Uh, I am at MessBF. Um, Brett is at, at BrettFX, and we typically cast for many other organizations. We do the random games as well, so we encourage you, encourage you guys to follow us as well. That is right. So you can find us, you know, over there on Siva. We'll be casting those matches as well as Level BF. And uh, we will also be casting the up-and-coming CGL tournament that's going to be happening. So very exciting stuff there. Um, and uh, this should be a pretty good event. Uh, they are going to be starting out, I believe, February is when their signups end up. So um, going to be fun, fun, fun stuff coming up. And then, of course, we're going to be back casting any future Gaming Grizz events that are going to be coming up. Very excited there. And Definitely Brett, through your inside connections, have we gotten word? Is this going to be live? Are we ready to rock here? I have not gotten anything yet, but you know what? We are going to be treating this live. We have most of the team spawning in like it is. Uh, Exertus is definitely going to be ready here. So we are going to have Exertus on the Chinese side, which, like we said before, has the option to go all in over onto A flag, which basically means they go five up around and slow push down into A and B flag. Uh, they could potentially go uh, four into A, one over to uh, B uh, alleyway which is right below the B bridge. And then uh, fairly standard, I would say, for the uh, U.S. teams, we're going to be seeing one uh, capping C flag, maybe one going over to the C tower, and then uh, two or three pushing up in into B, as well as one going over onto upper side. And here we go, kicking it off, folks. We are live. It's FAV versus Exertus NA in the round two on Dawnbreaker. This is looking like a bit of an untraditional, non-traditional breakout for Exertus. Look, we got one Bambi going long. He's gotten behind him. Through the trench, and I think he's going to come up behind them and actually catch them with their pants down and take Charlie. Very unorthodox breakout for Exertus EU, and I think it might pay off as it looks like FAV has no idea that Bambi is behind them. What do you think about that, Brett? Yeah, uh, I, did, I did like the fact that they uh, that they were able to get one behind her on the C. I do think that they should have waited on these spawns uh, happening over here into mid, and they should have spawned on Bambi back then. Uh, but... Uh, as it is, it looks like A is just going to be flipping for FAV, which honestly, that's that's the side that they want. I mean, FAV wants to have the A, B side, just which we saw on that last match. It's just so, so strong uh, to be able to hold these positions. But uh, Maneater is going to be doing a lot of damage over there on the upper side, able to get those nice uh, long-range picks over there in towards mid, uh, over onto bridge, and uh, just causing them generally a whole lot of trouble. Now, FAV, though, they're, uh, they're not content with just trying to get to this B flag. They're already going over onto C. Yeah, a surprising breakout from Exertus, which created a bit of a flip-flop. Watch from Alpha's perspective. He is on Charlie right by the line, crouching down to get this burn off. He's under fire, though. I think they're on to him. And he is going to take C. He's getting some shots off on f to upper side across from C. His teammate is down. But the surprisingly, the ramp is not down yet over at C, which typically we see get done early on in the game. And he is still stuck in this box. Hadouken's coming in. He takes him out. And there's one more. Oh, he cannot get two. Goes down. It looks like Exertus is going to take control of Charlie. Yeah, Abby going to be coming in from the backside. He's going to be able to spot out one. Uh, that's going to be Phantom. Uh, it looks like Hadouken's is going to try and uh, get a couple of uh, meds going up. 
and he does end up going down, but that Phantom just being a solid player back there, able to take out uh, Crackers as well as General Abby. So doing some work back there uh, right now. And we're also going to see two more players from FAV getting taken down over there onto mid B. Uh, and all five players are electing to spawn in right here. And they're going to try and hold on this to your life to try and keep this triple cap from happening. Uh, possible back rage here from uh, Crackers. No, gets knife right there. Oh, oh missed that one. And it is pandemonium right now as they have taken the triple trap. The triple cap has Exertus. Only about a 15 ticket lead, but that is going to increase drastically unless FAV can do something about it. We're seeing two of them come in to Alpha. It looks like Alpha coming to Alpha. He goes down to Phantom. There is one more there. Phantom playing smart. He's going to trail around through the lobby area. Potentially, uh, yeah, he's coming through the short hall. Oh, Metroid X, he trades with him. He does go down, and, and it does look like they are going to take control of Alpha. Yeah, it does. Bandy, the only one back here for Exertus uh, to do any damage at all. And he's actually in a really good spot to do a lot of damage, uh, to be honest with you. Um, trying to find, figure out where he's at. Bambi uh, does end up going, or no, stays alive, ends up taking out General Abby. Uh, so he's going to have uh, potential spawns going off on Bambi here in just a few moments. Or he can just basically back rage a whole bunch of people. Um, Phantom going to be coming around the corner. Hey, he does end up good taking down. So B Flag is now going to be shifting into the possession of uh, FAV with Bambi going down over there into mid. So uh, uh, maybe a slight little uh, uh, mistake there from Exertus. I think they should have used uh, Bambi a lot better to try and go for that back cap onto A Flag, pull back some of those FAV players. Because as of right now, uh, it's going to be in a triple cap. Yeah, very surprising. Great job by FAV, and that's the thing we've we've seen from them. You cannot count them out. They have great rotations while not necessarily having the hottest guns, especially when you're going up against a team like Exertus. Although we do see Phantom with a teammate taking Alpha and quickly moving out through the lobby. Going to catch a couple of them with their pants down at Bravo. He's getting some shots off on him, but hasn't taken anyone down yet. It's a showdown with Metroid X. He takes him down in the hallway there. Going to move out to Bravo, reloading kind of looking for some opposition, but there's still two guys there. He's got a teammate spawn on him. They're going to pinch down on Bravo. Our exerters to try to take control of it. Yeah, Krakus is the only one that's going to be up onto B flag. He's going to be all by his lone. So Phantom's going to be coming around the corner, able to take him down using that Ace-23. And uh, if you look at the KDs right now for uh, for these teams, once again, FAV is going to be in the negatives, but they are still hanging in there. 137 to 141. They are not far behind uh, in this matchup. Now, A flag is going to be burned here in just a few moments. Krakus has a choice uh, as well as Abby. Do we go for B? Do we go for A? It uh, looks like they are going to be splitting it uh, to A to B right now and just leaving see it by its lonesome and uh, FAV will be coming out on top on that B uh, push there. So Exert is playing this really uh, strange I would say. They're, they're not really uh, I don't know. They they're seem like they're all over the map as opposed to just one unit as we're used to seeing from some of these EU teams. Bambi though playing very well. 11 and 6. Yeah, Exertus not looking nearly as polished and as uh, tight and coordinated as we have come to see them in the past. Perhaps it could be some of the lineup rotations, as you did comment. You know, Crazy Nutta, you haven't seen him play a whole bunch. Not, you know, doing his top frag set. Well, maybe not top frag, but he's certainly better than 5 and 6, I think, to a degree. And FAB, despite being down in the frag department, is keeping it extremely close as it is 27 to 20. So 26 to 26 here, extremely close game. Yeah, very, very close, very even. And uh, FAV going to be getting some nice random spawns back there. It's one of the things you have to watch out for uh, when you're pushing up very aggressively over there towards A is getting some back spawns going on. But I think that's what they wanted. They wanted to force the majority of FAV back over towards C flag. They want to hold this burn. They already have some really good positioning over here by Manny. There. He's going to be on a one-on-one -on -one right now with Abby. Uh, now two-on-one. Phantom just spawning in over there. Very, very strong position. And as we saw from Slap in that last match, we're seeing Bambi over on long A. We're seeing one guy over here into mid. We're seeing two over on this upper side, so they're structured really, really well to hold this two cap for quite some time. Yeah, getting set up, the AB hold, the favorable hold, although they did get control of upper side as Synergy tries to make a move on Bravo, but he gets caught, gets taken down. Metroid X is moving in as he gets taken down, and it's just looking like every single time we watch it from that AB perspective, the Exertus guys are winning these gun battles. You know, eventually these rotations are, are, are not going to be enough as Exertus is getting a bit more polished and has taken a 20-ticket lead at this point. 
yeah, they're starting to really heat up now. We're seeing them getting a lot more of their shots in. Uh, we're seeing them positioning is really, really well right now. Uh, we're seeing them starting to spread out very nicely. Phantom's going to be taking positions up on the to, uh, upper side, and he's going to be able to catch maybe one, two people out into the open. Uh, yeah, he's going to be able to get one there. So nice job uh, on him. And then uh, Crazy Meta as well as Dokens is going to be playing into mid. Uh, now General Abbey has a chance to uh, to make something happen, but uh, Bambi completely whiffing on that lets two guys get right by him. And uh, there he goes. He's finally going to be uh, picking up Krakus. But uh, if FAV is smart, to push straight on to A and just try and get the cap. Ooh, nice kill by Abby. He does take down Bambi. He did get to re revive. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here. They're just kind of hanging out in rugs, but I think they need to make a move. They do have one on Alpha. They have Newt. It looks like they're trying to take it. Take it to pot shots at Hadoukens. Oh, and they both trade. And it yeah, looks like we do have two on Alpha. Phantom. A one-on-two -on situation over on C takes it by himself. Uh, we already have an Alf trying to come up and uh, get some uh, short work on him. And it does look like Phantom is going to be staying alive. Uh, or no, he ends up getting taken down. I'm sorry. By, uh, That's by Alpha, Alpha there. with the AK and, taking him out and getting the res. And Maneater uh, going to be coming back down into C. going to try and clean this up. He knows there's only one player left uh, right now. But two more spawning in back behind him. Phantom and Crazy both going to be able to get on the C very fast here. And now B is going to be wide open for FAB to cap it. Yeah, and they have, I think, four guys there. they got to get on the burn quickly, take advantage of Exertus being out of position because they're going to rotate back quickly, and it does look like they're going to try to take control of upper side. Let's go watch from Manny. He's been over there on his own. Some tanks down Crackers, but he's not. He doesn't see him. Oh, he does see Synergy to the right. Takes out Synergy. He's only got 13 health. He's got to drop a med pack. Nice job by Manny. They're maintaining control of that upper side on his own. He sees another one there taking some pot shots at him, throwing out a nade. And FAV is looking on the ropes here as they were keeping it neck and neck. But at this point, it's almost a 60-ticket lead. Or excuse me, 70-ticket lead for Exertus. Looking strong here as they yeah. warmed up. That, that right there was just an excellent exchange there for Exertus, hitting every single one of their frags uh, in their favor and was able to do a massive amount of damage to FAV. FAV basically had all of their team wiped over there uh, onto, uh, on, on B and across from B. So a uh, very good job by Exertus. They're starting to get all of their shots now. Uh, we do have a random spawn over here by two of the FAV members, so they should be able to hit A here in just a few moments. But you know what? It's it's going to be all for nothing because right now Exertus is uh, playing this exactly like they should. They're, they're able Taking to swing Charlie. back and forth from A and C flag and being able to cap both of them at the same time. Now FAV uh, is just getting picked apart now. It's going to be 40 to 110 with uh, Synergy and uh, General Abbey trying to take B back by himself. Uh, Alpha is going to be taken down over here onto A play. So it's just, they're just falling apart right now. Yeah, what looked like was going to be a close game has gone firmly under the control of Exertus as they have just completely heated up. Phantom 20 and 7 now. Let's watch from his perspective. He is on upper side of C. Drops a nade and heads over. Trying to get the res on his teammate. He does. Oh, he gets the res but cannot take General Abbey who was to the left. Watch from Crazy Nutta. He is hanging out at Bravo's Looking like he's peeking towards Charlie. He's knowing they're going to come towards him. See General Abbey. But the impervious cardboard boxes are stopping that damage. Yeah, and FAV is once again going to be losing C flag right now as uh, Phantom able to get in onto that burn and getting a couple of uh, back ranges going on over here. General Abbey having to turn around, trying to deal with this uh, pesky Phantom uh, in his back pocket. And Phantom doing a great job there. We'll be able to get the frag, and it's going to be only seven tickets left uh, right now. And that was just that was just a great finish for Exertus. Yeah, you really couldn't have finished any stronger. Finishing on a triple cap, that's basically the cherry on top as a 105-ticket win for Exertus in round one on Dawnbreaker. We will swap sides, and we'll see if FAV can respond. It's got to think Exertus, they've got the momentum, they've heated up, they know what they need to do to win this, and I don't expect them to slow down into round two. What do you think, Brett? Well, you know, honestly, uh, it, it, it could be anybody's game. Momentum is a funny thing, you know. If, if FAV, this is what we saw in that last match over there on, on Sivo, you know. FAV was, they, they weren't looking so hot. Uh, they were kind of, they weren't losing, they weren't winning their frag battles. And then they came back in the next round and they started getting those frags. They started heating up a little bit. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to be seeing possibly in this next round. Um, FAV had it neck and neck all the way there until around 100 tickets. And then that's when we started seeing that triple cap going into the favor of uh, Exertus. That's when you started seeing a lot of those frags going in their favor. So FAV may have just basically gotten to a little bit of a slump, you know. They, they were hanging in there, neck and neck, about halfway up through the match. So it's very possible for them to do the same thing. The problem is, is that they have to get out in front of it 
fast. They can't be playing from behind like they did that last round. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, I think they should. If you're FAV, you got to be confident. You started strong. You hung with them neck and neck, like you said. At this point, all you really got to do is start strong and stay strong. Just be confident in your positions. And I wouldn't be overly aggressive. I think if, if I'm them, I want to try to get control of the two flag burn and set up a line. Preferably A, B if you can. Multiple times that's one of the easiest ones to hold to kind of draw a line in the sand, particularly if you can hold upper side. But it'd be interesting to see what their breakout is if they go aggressive or if they just kind of stick with the traditional push. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a real quick update right now, Epsilon is going to be moving on into round number three, beating out Elysium Gaming. So the uh, winner of Illusion and Nexus BF4SA will be facing off against them on Monday on Paracel Storms. And that should be a great match. Really yes, excited it should. to see some of these later round matches. I hope you guys are too. We thank you for tuning in with us. Once again, this is the Gaming Grids 5v5 Domination Tournament. It's the $1,500 New Year's Bash. We've got a who's who of teams joining us with some of the top, including the top team in the world, as we start round two in this match between FAB and Exertus. Oh my god, Bambi, right from the breakout, is going huge. Able to stop two players going down trench side. He does end up getting picked up by Krakas, but he did the damage that he needed to. He was able to stop any kind of a push going out through trench and trying to back rage into C flight. They read that perfectly. I love that play there. Uh, Hadokens and Bambi are both going to be out uh, over onto Long A, trying to do some damage themselves. It's going to be Alpha versus Bambi back and forth, and it looks like Wow, FAV might be getting on a triple cap here in just a second if Alpha can hold on this one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, looking like a really strong breakout. It's going to come down to a showdown at C, and it looks like they did... Oh, no, nope. Exertus was able to hold on at C, so just a, a two-flag burn. It looks like A is already burning as Exertus, Crazy Nutta, and Bambi are both back there, but already moving towards Bravo. Not content with just two. These guys want three. 191 to 184 to start, and C is burning again. Looks like FAB is going to try to rotate, but we've got Phantom and Maneater both back there. We're watching from Bam's perspective. Trying to take... Oh, the Magnum was not going to be good enough. He does go down. Watch from Maneater. He's, he is still there. They don't see him. Alpha ran away. Taking out the pistol, and he goes down. Alpha is able to clean things up. And FAB right taking now control. Yeah, FAV is on the back foot. They are in a lot of trouble right now. They are switched back over into the worst spawns that they could be in. They're over on C now. Uh, they lost the A. They, they they need to get some really good positioning going on now. Their saving grace might be this player coming in through trench. It's going to be Alpha, uh, who is going to be pushing up back behind A flag. Uh, B is also going to be flashing right here and gets great out. So Abby able to get the, the pick on uh, on Bambi and going to be getting onto B flag. So uh, we might be seeing a potential triple cap here. And if they can hold this, if they can start winning their frags, we might be seeing them coming back. Yeah, this is a, it's a good position to be in. It's a nice setup. Oh, as they do take down Hadoukens in cut. They take down another in the pillars right in front of Rugs and a nice job by FAV. But just as we say that, we do have a back spawn. Three of Exertus at Statue at C. See if FAV responds, and it looks like one of Exertus is going to try to contend with the upper side guys. And it, it, it's just looking like when they get that momentum, when they can get that triple cap, they're not holding it long because Exertus is just too good. They're taking advantage of their spawns and, and making some nice rotations. Yeah, well, the other thing that you have to remember, too, is that Exertus is, is they're not playing from behind here. They know they have 100 tickets to win. That was a beautiful pick there by Alpha, able to get two picks over there onto mid. Uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're basically, they got a 100 ticket buffer here. So, you know, FAV has to beat them by 100 plus tickets. It's like 105 tickets. 105. Uh, so, you know, there's not a whole lot of room to play with there. Uh, FAV, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble here if they can't, you know, hold this off. The B flight is going to be contested here in just a few moments as we're seeing three players who we got through mid. Uh, they do see that. And, you know, Exertus, they just need to play calm. Yeah, they don't need to be aggressive. Like you said, Brett, they do know that they have that lead. As we're watching from Hadouken's perspective, he's going to clean him up on the C. Yeah, I think that is a triple kill. Oh, no, two and a half. They're at the Bravo steps on the street near the bus, and they're going to try to get set up here. Although they are sandwiched, we do have Crazy Nana retaking Alpha, looking for the Alpha Bravo burn. They do have a good line in the sand drawn, but it looks like they are pretty far pushed up. Phantom going down on the high side. Let's watch from Hindukit's perspective. He is pushing up pretty far on the right. Going to drop in the, tr in the trench and perhaps get behind him. We'll switch to Synergy. Perhaps he is going to catch him. He is actually watching that side now. I think he's onto this. I don't know if he got spotted or if perhaps he just knows to watch. He is waiting for someone to come up that, that back side. 
Well, right now, um, yeah, they are going to be in a little bit of trouble. The Synergy, I believe, spots this out as he is moving uh, quite aggressively over there towards Hadoukens. And yeah, he does uh, end up spotting that out and takes him down. So that's going to be a really good job there uh, on his side. And now Crack is as well as Alpha are going to both be getting onto that B and A burn. Uh, Phantom's going to be back there trying to save it for his team uh, using that Ace-23 to his uh, best abilities. He's going to be able to take out one and two and three going huge for his team right there. If there was an MVP given away, that was definitely the moment to do it. Wow. Phantom going huge. Able to save that fly cap for his teammates. And uh, now, 143 to 137. It's still close. But remember, FAV doesn't have a whole lot to play with. Yeah, they cannot go down below 105 tickets. Otherwise, it is over because it's decided by aggregate ticket over the two rounds. So roughly 30 tickets at this point to play with as they are all knotted up at 135 apiece. Exertus, though, we control the double have AB, the easy hold. We're seeing Phantom here on the high side, giving in an MVP performance in this match. As he does eat a nade, he's getting aggressive. Nades out everywhere. He does finally eat one from Synergy Cool. Nice job by him. Watch from Man Eater's perspective. He is going to get the res there. Bringing up Alpha, dropping a mid pack. And they're maintaining control of that high side. And if you are FAV, you've got to be worried at this point. You only have 20 tickets left. It's not looking good. Looks like Exertus is going to secure the victory if they don't do something fast. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's just whittling away. And honestly, uh, with the way that Exertus has been playing, with the way they've been fragging, it's not going to be possible for them to come back. Although, we will, I will say this, though. FAV has been doing quite well, shutting down really the, the massive frags that we saw Exertus doing in that previous round. We're not seeing FAV really getting as many, but they're certainly not dying as much. I mean, I, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird uh, like that, but it does help out a little bit. And if we had saw this from FAV from the beginning, uh, I think that it would have been a completely different first round. As uh, Right now, obviously, they have lost it. It's 133 to 97 right now in triple cap in favor of Exertus. So Ex Exertus will be moving on. Yeah, extremely strong finish by them. Uh, perhaps a little flustered uh, going out of the gate as FAV was able to keep it pretty close in the first half of the first round. But then Exertus making some nice adjustments and kind of uh, figuring FAV out and taking firm control of the round and the match. And they haven't looked back since then as they are looking to win this round by another huge difference. Watch from Hadouken's perspective. He is in the lobby at Alpha. He's got one on him. Looks like two, three on him. What can he do here? Oh, no, he can't do anything. He does go down. That is FAV. Looks like Synergy, I believe, got him. No, that wasn't Synergy. He's on the other side of the map. We got Alpha here on Bravo. They are going to nooch it. FAV is going to play to the buzzer. This is all for pride, though. As we said, earlier, Exertus has won this match. They will move on. FAV will go home. Alpha taking out Crazy Nut. Pushing on to Charlie. He does get taken out from behind. Now, Brett... If you're Exertus and, and you know, you've won this, you're moving on, what do you think they can take from this? I mean, do you think they could be happy with their performance, or do you think they need to do some work if they're going to perhaps make a go of this? Honestly, FAV did a really good job there. They had a few uh, mistakes going in, but, I mean, they're playing Exertus, who is right now the top team in the U.K., and they're in the top eight right now uh, over there in Europe. So, I mean, you can't – I mean, they finished top eight in, in DreamHack, so you can't really, uh, you know, feel bad about – uh, you know, taking this team down as much. I mean, they, they, the numbers don't show it, but they really did play this team very, very well. As I stated before, a few little mistakes that they could have fixed, and we're, we, we would have been seeing a, a lot different round coming in here. Um, the other thing that you have to, to remember, too, is that uh, Exertus plays against the best of the best every single day. Uh, so, you know, they play against Fnatic, they play against Epsilon, they play against MYM. Um, and when you get to play against those type of teams, you know, your worst day is a lot of times better than a lot of these teams best day so <laughs> that's I mean, a great point it's, it's no you know it's no small feat for fav to come in here and uh to basically pull down exertus as bad as what they were i mean honestly uh, there are a lot of people out there that were probably thinking you know what uh fav is probably going to be uh you know taken down to around you know 180 to zero you know and where exertus isn't losing any tickets at all hard and right. that's not the case yeah, absolutely. I mean, certainly can't be discouraged by their performance, can FAV. I think they can learn a lot from this. Perhaps go back and watch the bot and see what they did well, see what they could improve upon. Um, but we will see Exertus EU move on. We will see them face. Who will they face in the next round? Brett, do we know? Should we bring up the brackets at this point? Since yeah, the in the next decided? round, Exertus EU will be playing Assault Team. 
Um, and that's going to be on Parasol Storms tomorrow. Uh, it does look like that uh, Rico's Rough Riders ended up winning against Noobs in War. They will be moving on uh, tomorrow. And whoever wins against the uh, AAA and Saucy Gamers is going to be playing uh, Rico's Rough Riders. Um, and then the Bottom Frag and Oxalot match, I believe, have not happened yet. So whoever wins that is going to be moving on to play Vivacity. Uh, and I believe we're going to be gearing up here in the next few minutes to watch the um, War Child versus No Mercy match, which that should also be a really good match. Uh, shaping up. Oh, that's excellent. Yes, it looks like Warchild, I guess, getting the win over Delta Airborne Force. And we were talking earlier that uh, the winner of that match, the Warchild No Mercy gaming match, is going to have a tall task against Slap Esports as we did see them take an extremely comfortable victory over, uh, you know, not a not a scrub team in Flot Gaming. Those guys have a lot of experience. They put in the work. So for Slap to put in a 261 ticket victory over them, it says a lot about uh, about their potential and their and their talent. Yeah, it absolutely does. Absolutely. And uh, so anyways, guys, once again, we do appreciate you coming out and watching. Um, if uh, if you have not checked it out, we do have a second stream going on. I believe that's going to be AAA versus Saucy uh, Gamers. And that is going to be on uh, Gaming Grids 2. So twitch.tv slash Gaming Grids 2. That's going to be Chadman who is solo casting that. And uh, props to Chadman, you know, for solo casting. I've done it many times before. It's not fun. Tough to do. He actually, he actually likes it. Really? He prefers yeah. it, huh? Yeah, he's like a, what do you call those guys that likes pain? A masochist? A masochist. He is a masochist. <laughs> I, I think he is because, God, it is terrible casting by myself. I absolutely hate it. And uh, it does look like AAA ended up winning against Saucy Gamers. Uh, so that is going, they are going to be moving on uh, to face off against, uh, I believe it's going to be Assault Team. No, that is going to be against Vivacity. Wait a minute, where am I? No, Rikers Refex. Oh my God. I'm saying all kinds of things and not saying anything at all. So, anyways, <laughs> they're going to be playing Rico Roughnecks tomorrow on Paracel Storm. Uh, so that should be a pretty interesting match there. And uh, we're just going to try and get some word here as to when the War Child match is going to be shaping up. Yeah, so once again, folks, Exertus EU winning the match comfortably over FAV, although a nice performance, as Brett said, against a top eight team in Europe. And, you know, I think we can all, all agree, although as much as the NA guys don't want to admit it, the European community is pretty much uh, ahead of us at this point, other than maybe the Exertus NA guys. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how some of the North American teams face off against these, you know, European titans. We've got the likes of... You know, Fnatic, the best team in the world right now in Battlefield 4. We've got Meet Your Makers. We've got Epsilon Esports. Of course, we do have Exertus EU, Exertus NA. A lot of good teams. A lot of great matches on the horizon for us, folks. So we are going to take a, I think, a short break so we figure out what is going on with this next match. We encourage you to go check out the second stream over at Gaming Grids 2. Give Chadman some love. Once again, we said he is by himself. So y'all go check that out. We will be back shortly with the next match. <laughs> 